Hey guys, welcome to another episode of LJ's Garage. If you're new to the channel, this is my E30 project and it has been quite a project so far. Some of the problems I created myself, I will admit, but if you are new, just know that this is my attempt to bring an E30 back to life. Make it amazing, make it fun, make it great. And my plan is to keep it as stock as possible. Just a little bit of like a OEM plus type of upgrade. We're gonna dive right into this episode. I don't really have a rhyme, reason, or sequence for anything, because as I do this, the more I realize that there's like one other project here, another project there, another project there. So the list just keeps on adding. So we're just gonna tackle things as they come. So if you are new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button to stay along with this journey. And uh, it's nice to have you on board. I like making new friends. So the first thing that we're gonna do is just let the car's oil warm up a little bit. So that could be running the engine for 10 to 15 minutes or just going for a quick drive and then letting it cool down for about 20, 25 minutes, something like that. So you don't have scolding hot oil. And then we'll move into the next steps. So the next thing that I'm gonna do in this video is we're gonna do an oil change on this. I've got a couple spots that I know are leaking that I'll have to take care of. So underneath here, this guy's got a leak right along here. Boop. And then right there, right where my oil is, you can see that leaking oil right there. So luckily I've got a new plug washer and everything that I need to do that oil change. So. I'm gonna go ahead and let this run for a little bit, recharge the battery, back it up, and then throw this on some gas tank. <laughs> of course I got everything from FCP Euro. But I also do recommend like ECS tuning, all that good stuff, you know. So I got some oil, I'm going with 10W40, got my filter, and a new washer and plug. So pretty nice. All right, so we're under here. As you can tell, I've got quite a few leaks that I'm gonna have to address. Luckily, not too many that are really like crazy. Like I'm pretty sure that I could get away with fixing these slowly. Right here is leaking pretty good. This is the big one on the list. And then, of course, I'm leaking some oil from that. So that's the other one. I'm also gonna check up there for my oil filter, which we can do that right now. Oil filter looks fairly good, I'd say, considering the age of this. But something else is leaking around here, which I'm gonna have to get in and figure out. But it doesn't seem to be actively. Uh, actually, there's a little bit of oil on that right there, so maybe it is. So it could just be my whole oil pan altogether that's leaking. Oh, that's gonna be a mess. Oh boy, what did I decide to take on? <laughs> oh man, oh man. This too. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Lots of little leaks. Looks like it's um, is 15? Something like that. 15, sweet. Don't make fun of my purple gloves either. They're just all I happen to have around. Here she goes. Oh, so close, so close, so close. Oh yeah. Oh shit. Stupid drain pan is slow. to angle this thing. Glug, 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 glug. All right, let me get up top and remove that cap. I haven't done an oil change on one of these in so long, even like 10 years. Not that it really changes too much, but still, remove this cap. Oh, shit. Don't do what I just did. Eventually, I gotta do these plugs. I'm gonna adjust the valves, and that's the goal. 
Maybe once I do the valves, I can figure out what's leaking under there. And then we're just gonna give this about 10 minutes to just keep draining and doing what it does. I'm also looking back behind the transmission and there's definitely something leaking back there as well. So this thing has so many leaks, it's not even funny. So I gotta figure out if this is all, this all feels like it's part of the, uh, I wonder if this just unbolts. So I've gotta figure this whole thing out, but I wanna say it just unbolts and then this little side skirt thing pops off, but it might not. It might actually be like secure molding on this thing. I gotta figure that out. Anyways, see what we got back here. Oh yeah. Got some leaks back here for sure. Not too bad, but definitely something to address. I'm just happy there isn't much rust, just these little pinch wells. It's to be expected that there's gonna be a lot of little projects. So this is actually part of the car. I thought this was like a molding. This part is, obviously. So I could pull this off. This probably just needs to be sanded down, repainted. Ugh, I wish I could listen to music while doing this, but stupid YouTube and their rules, even though it's not really their rules, it's like the entertainment industry rules. I'm gonna come through once I get this oil change done and I'm gonna clean up as much of this with a cleaner so I can start figuring out what exactly is leaking where. Should be pretty fun, but just about empty. If you don't have one of these little filter removers, I definitely recommend them. There's two different styles out there that I've seen. There's the one that's like a cup and it goes on the back of the filter and you can put a wrench on it, but then I like this one because you can really get kind of... The only thing with this one, of course, it does crush the filter sometimes, so be careful. All right, so what these do, just get it right on and you just give it a little twist. You go back down, give it another twist. like this. So. Work this filter off. Ugh. Try not to clamp it too much. Now that it's loose, I can get this filter out, or I can get the tool off. We're gonna use hand strength now. I didn't feel like making a mess, so I'm just gonna let that drain out. Interestingly, I'm pretty sure this filter's kind of at like a little bit of an angle. It doesn't look like it's perfectly flat, so it does have a tilt to it. Should make it very interesting to put the new one on, especially since I like to fill the filters a little bit before I put them on. It's always recommended. As I'm doing this, I just realized that this would probably have been a good time to do my oil cooler lines, but I just also looked up the parts for these, and these are expensive as F. So if anybody wants to, you know, sponsor, or if you got a set, you want to, you know, send me for the low low, let me know. Or any other solutions you guys have for these, I'm going to have to do some research, but I'm not looking forward to that job at all. Maybe next oil change, if these aren't leaking too bad. If you guys get one of these, you can find the service manuals and everything online. So I got the new filter in hand. I'm just gonna go ahead and dip my finger in here, rub a little bit around the outer lip, if you know what I mean. I don't know if I'm gonna fill any in here, or like pre-fill. I might add a little bit in there just so there's some, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that. It's kinda hard to film, so just trust that it's happening. All right, new washer in, filter tighten. This ended up being a 15, so I think somebody at some point either switched it out or somewhere in the redesign or whatnot, they changed it up a little bit. So maybe that's why I got a 17 instead of a 15, but I'm going to keep an eye on that because it was leaking pretty good last time. Filter is in there, so it's time to fill it up and make sure we got no leaks. Everything I read said this guy uses about four and a half quarts, give or take. I do have a funnel, but I'm just going to not use a funnel back with the funnel. Lesson learned. Oh, 
drink that thirsty girl. So now that I've got four quarts in there, I'm gonna go ahead and get this off the stands shortly. But before I do that, I'm gonna put the cap back on. And I know I'm missing about a half a quart, but that's all right. That's on. I'm just gonna wipe everything up. I think maybe over the winter, I'll probably just see if it's easy to pull this whole front end off to get to everything, just clean it all up and see what leaks I got, because it's probably gonna take a lot of work to get to each one of these leaks individually, figure out what exactly is even leaking. All right, so here's a good look at everything before. Still no leaks. We'll do one more check. Oil filter, good. And oil plug, good. So now it's time to drop this down. Like I said, I'm gonna bring this outside and I'm gonna spray it off. All right, so all you guys missed, I added another half a quart, roughly. Checked it with the dipstick, which is gonna be located right here. I do kind of miss the days when BMW had an old school dipstick. I know that that's a long ways away. Anyways, that's all done. You guys can see that looks atrocious. So that's probably one of the next thing I'm gonna do is cooling system flush. And then we'll get to like the brake fluid and all the other stuff. But man, little by little, lots to do. And get one of these, get a new air intake. Check this filter in a little bit here. Let's see what we got. So in order to reset the light, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this little service connector and we're just gonna jumper between pin seven and 19. And these are numbered, so you could see them sort of, kind of. Let me see if I can get you guys a, nope, too small. But yeah, trust me, there's numbers on those. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that jumper in. So I've got my jumper in and I'm just gonna go ahead and put the accessories on. I'll give it about five seconds to reset. See if my service lights turn off. I'm gonna leave you guys here for a second. I just need to check these brake lights. Next up on the list of added leaks, you guys can see all that built up right there. I don't even know exactly what that's leaking from. Jeez, what the hell? Got all sorts of gunk build up all over. This is gonna be a fun one to try to find all these leaks. The list just keeps growing and growing and growing. But luckily, most of these don't seem too bad. It's just me trying to be positive, guys. Unfortunately, all I did was really just make everything under here wet. But it's a little bit cleaner, right? All right? Come on, guys. Cheer me on so I don't cry. Because I want to cry. But anyways, the next thing that's going to be on this list today, let's try to see what we can do with this paint. I've got a lot of parts that are on the way. It's kind of cool. They got ECS. Uh, looks like ECS brake lines. Uh, so yeah, some, some stuff coming for this. We're going to have to try to figure out all these leaks little by little. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you got some entertainment or learned something new. And if you are interested, be sure to check out the last video I posted. And this one was just trying to refresh the paint on the E30. These are the after results. But be sure to take a look at this if you want to see kind of how you can bring your paint back to life. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next one. Like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Peace.